Hello, Arrowheads. Welcome back to the Collider Arrow Cave. I'm Jason Hemmons, standing in for Anne, who is, uh, we think, lost. Maybe she was kidnapped by Damian Dark. We don't know. But Get hopefully, back, she'll... <laughs> <laughs> but hopefully she'll be back next week. We're gonna break down tonight's episode of Arrow. And first, before we do that, I want to introduce all my guests for tonight. We have the lovely Josh McCuga over here. Hey guys, uh, I brought McDonald's for everybody tonight, so you're friggin' welcome. Uh, <laughs> great to be here, and uh, really excited to talk about this episode. I, I really, I thought this episode had had some really great parts. It really did. Yeah. And next to him, David Griffin. Um, coming straight from the Flash, so I brought a little bit of yeah, Iris with me. <laughs> I wore the shirt either last week or the week before just to show off my love for Iris. So I, I think brought. You're a little sleeping love. in that shirt now. Aren't yeah, you? I just kind of just figured, it, well, why change? Who changes? Yeah. <laughs> And next to him, Michael Medina. Hey, folks, give me back my son. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> All right, let's break this down. And for tonight's episode, Code of Silence. Hmm. Now, this episode dealt a lot with like the secrets, like Oliver keeping the secrets about his baby son, uh, Lance keeping secrets from Mama Smoke, uh, all kinds of secrets. What were some overall impressions? What did you guys like this episode? Did we hate this episode? Let's hear some thoughts, Michael. I enjoyed this episode. Okay, I liked it a lot. Um, no, I just thought I think what I what I like what I'm seeing since the break since they came back is that they're really setting the pieces. They're moving forward. I feel like no episode has really been filler for me, with the exception of maybe the flashbacks. Mm -hmm. You know, I've just I haven't cared about. But I like what they're doing. We finally, well, we kind of get teased with the mayoral deba debate. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't actually get to see. It. I know we joked around yeah. and watched like I want to see what he's gonna do with taxes. <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't get to see the. Good I actually, stuff. I actually had that in my bad. I was like, I need to know what he's gonna do with the police budget. I uh, ask not what Star City can do for you, but what you can do for Star City. Uh, what, what, what if his opening statement was like, "They're like Oliver Queen opening statement." My name is Oliver <laughs> Queen. <laughs> Five years ago. <laughs> David, what'd you think? No, this is a great episode. I felt like um, last, at least I don't know, last week's I wasn't. That impressed, even though it had a huge action sequence. You know, we had yeah. Merlin get his hand cut off and, you know, uh, disbanding of the League of Assassins. This episode I liked more. It felt more personal. Yeah. I liked this story. I thought Felicity and her mom had the best moment they've had uh, ever since they introduced her. It was fantastic just sitting there like, you need to learn trust. Like, his, her daughter was teaching her something, even though her mom's been through so much. That was a great moment. It's funny you should say that because I know we always <clears> talk <throat> about who's in the grave, who's in the grave, who's in the grave. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, all right, well, it could be Mama Smoke if they develop her character more, which it mm -hmm. seems like they're starting to move in that direction. Mm -hmm. Not mm -hmm. saying they're definitely it's Mama Smoke. Smoke. a lot more of her. Absolutely. And Mama Smoke. It, it, oh, oh, I see. I see what we did there. Because Mama was, Smoke was looking nice tonight. That was clever. Huh? She was wearing them dresses. Josh, did you like all the uh, the revelations about Mama Smoke? Did you? What did you think of this episode, man? Um, you know, I, I, what I loved was that um, we got a new way to try and take down Oliver's crew. We've never seen like a demolition team mm -hmm. come in and take down buildings. And those special effects were awesome. I made a little joke that it was like Legends of the Hidden Temple when they're running out in that first one. But it, it really worked really well. Um, and if you notice those bombs in the theater, they were kind of like the bombs in Die Hard with a Vengeance where like the stuff's mixing uh, together. Yeah. Um, but I thought, I thought overall the the scenes that weren't action were probably some of the best non-action scenes we've seen this There's season. Some really great character scenes. Yeah, yeah. that the, the scene with Oliver and Thea was Awesome. That was mm -hmm. great acting. Totally like a sisterly thing to say to an older brother, and finally he's like listening to Speedy. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought uh, I really liked the villains, and there was just enough bad guy and and just enough like good stuff to make this a really well balanced episode. I enjoyed it. To, to touch on that, that's one of the things I think that's been missing from Arrow lately is that those one on one, those human moments, you know, mm -hmm. like really building up the supporting cast. And like these are moments we haven't really seen in a while. Like yeah. you said, uh, David with like Mama Smoke and Felicity, or with like Oliver and Thea. These were scenes I've been wanting to see for a while, and I'm glad we're finally starting to get them. Yeah, there, yeah, there was there was a, there was a lot of great moments in the in this episode. I actually think this is one of my favorite episodes of this entire yeah. season. I think. Yeah, they brought the character action hardcore. Yeah. They had a lot of great action scenes. And you were talking about the the demolition team. They actually are a DC Comics team. They oh. are a group of like uh, villains from yeah. Green Lantern. They're oh, cool. actually called mm -hmm. the demolition team. Um, so basically, they, the entire episode, uh, Arrow and his team are fighting these people while they're trying to do the presidential debate. And I knew as soon as that opening scene started, like where we, we were in the, uh, the debate arena, as I'm going to call it. And then they and then they ran into their their bikes and they did some bike tricks and they had a fight scene. I thought this was one of the strongest opening scenes yeah. of this entire season. What do you guys feel about that opening scene where we we melded a little bit of the character moments with the action dead on? I was gonna say I agree because that music, the introduction to the music, that's called epic for lack of a better yeah, word. Yeah, yeah. Dun, 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 you know, it's that music and sometimes they do that intro. 
There's really nothing that doesn't yeah, you're earn, like, they don't you're earn like, it. They don't earn okay. it. They missed the mark just a few times. Yeah. traffic in yeah. a motorcycle. It's yeah. awesome. He, he, yeah. he was getting his um, yeah, uh, Evil Knievel on this, this episode. Because it used to be yeah. the way, like every time they when they built into that, dun, 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 yeah. dun, dun, yeah. you were like, yeah! Yeah, yeah. it meant something. But I thought, and now you're like, like where's yeah. Laurel? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you on that one too. I thought that that opening sequence, that like ticking clock, really worked well, and then she disappears, mm-hmm. yeah. and then we have the exchange with her and Green Arrow. It's uh, the the fact that they both pretty much know who one another are. You know, like you you got to figure she knows that it's all over Queen. Well, if, if she doesn't, I think she's stre- they're stretching it beyond the point of believability. Right. Well, at right. the end, of, like near the end of the episode, he's like, you know, wow, it looks like they really brought the house down or tried to. Or something. I'm like, yeah. Well, yeah, well, I think that, she has an idea. That's something that I thought was so strong in this episode. All this passive aggressive dialogue mm, that was that a lot was of fun. so clever. There yeah. must have been eight or nine tongue in cheek moments, yeah. cu- like culminating with the "You are terrific." Uh, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. yeah. We all giggled at that one. Never heard Oliver say those words before. Got a <laughs> You're right. fabulous. Uh, you're just fabulous. <laughs> Another thing I want to bring up is we got to see again the Damien Dark evil group. I noticed, and we haven't seen them since I think before mm-hmm. the holiday break. And now Malcolm Merlin is part of the group, yeah. and they're all talking about Phase Five. And we saw Damien Dark force choke somebody in Paris, I believe, through Skype. <laughs> yeah, through Skype. <laughs> yeah. Even Malcolm um, looked concerned. Yeah, when he was sitting there with his arm, just kind of like. Oh, I know what that Most guy of my do. ex-girlfriends have tried to do that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, David, what do we think? What do we think about this evil group? Do we like it? What, what the hell do we think they're up to? Well, I mean, the group's not interesting yet because we don't know who any of these people are. Yeah. They need more development outside of Malcolm Merlin, who was in the group, but he didn't do anything either. And they had like this guy in Spain just kind of sitting there looking all sleazy, like, <laughs> how lo- yeah, with that stupid, yeah, that stupid hat. Like, how is it in Madrid? You know, and then he just you know kills him to the yeah. screen. Uh, I-, I love. Uh, Oh, sorry, I forget the actor's name. McDonald. Uh, yeah, McDonald. McDonald. He, yeah. he, he's fantastic. Mm-hmm. He's he's hamming it up every episode. Yeah. But when good actors are hammy, it works because they yes. can pull it off. But I feel like the group as a whole doesn't do anything for me because we don't know who they are yet. Maybe the, we never. There know. is something about this crew that's like Austin Powers, like Doctor Evil's crew. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like that's my number two. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. We're, and each person has like a different accent and different look. Like, <laughs> this man is right. Russian. He's like, yes, I am. I look one. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, yeah. yeah. Like I said, like Spectre. It's like all you care about is Christoph Waltz's character. You don't mm-hmm. really care about the other twenty men in the room. So maybe so it's like yeah. Batista. That's, that's a good point. Like I'd like to see more of these guys. But I don't know about you guys. But I kind of got this like Legion of Doom vibe. Like, yes. like that could be pretty yeah. awesome if they yeah. actually went that route. Maybe not as you know, but just. To develop those villains and just well, like, are you talking Legion of Doom, the wrestling dude? No, team? not L- no, no, From no. The super friends. <laughs> super friends. <laughs> Although they were cool though too. Yeah, they were cool. Gotcha. Well, it's interesting. Uh, I remember last week uh, uh, we talked about how we felt that they had been dropping some of the Damian Dark stuff. Like we still don't know what the cornfield is. We still don't know what that weird stone map is thing. And I kind of feel like. We're getting a little bit like like they they touched on it enough for me that I felt that we got enough that that, that storyline moved inched ahead a little bit forward. Whereas for like six weeks now, it's kind of been stagnant. Mm. So. I agree, but they're moving at a snail's pace with yeah. this thing. A lot, almost as bad as last season. Last season was probably a little worse, yeah. but just feels like. Again, I watch these flashbacks and I just I, I'm zoning out. I just don't care enough. The cuts are so you know? quick. Wow. Yeah. Oh, really I, have, I have the flashbacks completely in the bad section. Yeah. So <laughs> oh. let's let's hold on. Let's, yeah, let's, hold, let's hold on that. Let's talk off. about what I thought was something that was great. And David touched on this a little bit earlier. I think this is the best Mama Smoke mm-hmm. has been. I thought she was not annoying. She was great. She she became a real person in this yeah. episode. I, and a real sexy person. Yes, well. man. Thank goodness. I've been, <laughs> I've been murdered on the internet the last three weeks because I said something about uh, Iris that I shouldn't have. Uh, Iris is amazing. I love everything about her. Let's leave um, that for the flash. Leave that, yeah. uh, <laughs> but Mama Smoke, welcome to Smoke City. She is just, my Smoke God. City. Mama like Smoke that. was smoking. Well, but, but, she, but see, they did. They they doubled down on her. One, also, they, they uh, I, there was no Vegas metaphor there, even though she's from Vegas. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, there you go. Nice. Um, um, she she like had an amazing dress for that one scene. But mm-hmm. at the same time, I love that scene where she called Lance out. Yeah. Like she was like, "Look, I've discovered one thing from Vegas, and I know when people are lying to you." Yeah. And she has that ultimate BS detector. So like. Uh, to, for me, that like put a lot to her character because I'm like, oh, okay, we finally moved past the character of like, oh, Felicity, let's anyway. plan, let's plan the wedding, yeah. and she became a real person, part well, of the team. That's always yeah. been her problem. I've always liked Mama Smoke. She's a fun mm. character, but she's always been a cartoon, yeah. basically. Yes. Yeah. you know. So this was the first time we actually well, they, they've teased a little bit here and there, talking about like, oh, I dated your father, or whatever, and things didn't work out, whatever. But this is the first time we actually got to see like deeper emotions, like just where like what makes Mama Smoke tick. And I, I agree with you. I love that scene where she basically you know puts. Uh, Lance and Shaq and that was a great scene mm-hmm. yeah David 
How you feel about Mama Smoke? Oh, I mean, I'm all for Mama Smoke. Aside I mean, from the obvious, of course. Aside from the obvious, no, no. She she was like I said, that was the best moment that they've had on the whole season. You know, since they introduced her, because it's just a touching moment. You really felt it. It's hard. The show has so many soapy moments where it's two people sitting down, clear the room. Let me talk to Oliver. Yeah. Let's have a conversation. Oliver, we need to talk. And they sit down. The music starts going. It's like, okay, here we go. That This one felt very organic. It was mm -hmm. natural. It flowed. It worked for me. And that's not easy to do. I mean, we kind of I make fun of it sometimes, but it's not easy to do. And they pulled it off well. Right. I think maybe one of the more fun parts is how they're kind of treating this grave now, like uh, in Hot Tub Time Machine, <laughs> when, when Crispin Glover's <laughs> arm is cut off, right? In the, in the beginning. You guys are just waiting for it. They're, yeah. <laughs> they're waiting for his arm to get chopped off the whole movie. They're like, oh! <laughs> yeah, so like we're watching, and Theo's like, "Let me go back and get the laptop." We're like, "Oh, it's uh, uh, Mama Smoke's like, "We gotta go sit." Like, "Oh, Mama Smoke!" Like, so we don't know uh, who's in that grave yet, but they are really teasing us. He was part where now. Mama, or, or that was another Mama, uh, Damien Dark's wife walked by Felicity and Mama Smoke walked by them. We're like, "Oh." And then yeah. nothing ended up happening. I don't even know if she even overheard what they were saying. Well, even but. the thing where, where Diggle got hit in the face. Or no, no, Diggle hit the other guy with a sledgehammer. But and then the, the guy, guy hit the chest, the guy I think, hit, originally. Yeah, Diggle got hit in the chest with a sledgehammer. Fight. Yeah. Messed up his mask. His mask is messed up. Yeah, his, ma yeah. his mask is sort of broken. Uh, and, and, and going to that, like, man, yeah, there were some great explosions and you talk, mm. you brought up the Thea scene where she she's like oh go back for the bomb I'll stop the bomb um, and when they showed that scene where she was running through the hallway and the and all the debris was coming down yeah. I, I actually this is the first time this season I felt afraid for any of the characters because right. a couple of times it, it, with with uh, Lance and his daughter in the building and then with Thea I was mm -hmm. like this building could fall on them right we mm -hmm. could get a repeat of Tommy with some rebar through somebody because we know the grave is coming so yeah. something's yeah. gonna happen yeah yeah, yeah. 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 I, and I was a little worried at first because I was yeah. like oh is it this far into the season that yeah. The person dies? Holy cow. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, I think there were also some great connections in this episode between Oliver and Lance. And Lance, I felt this episode got to become a real strong part of the Arrow team. Like, because, you know, remember basically the whole episode, he was kind of chilling in the Arrow cave, drinking coffee, sure. talking about it. What do you guys think about. <laughs> Uh, he was. He was chill. He drank some. He's coffee. Coffee. What is this, Colombian? <laughs> <laughs> I only drink fresh roast. I like my blends dark roasted. <laughs> uh, what do you guys think about the? I feel like also this is the first episode or one of the best episodes that we've seen Lance become a part of the team. Yeah, I think because um, he's really been absent the last maybe three weeks yeah, or so, so like he hasn't that, really yeah. been around. And it's nice to see him back. Like even though we know that he's worked with Hive in the past, that he really is starting to become more of a vigilante because I think what the writers are realizing, what we've realized for the last two seasons, is that Star City PD is friggin' terrible. Yeah, mm -hmm. pretty much. Like, they are brutally bad. And that's why I wanted to hear what was going to happen with the police budget. Right. <laughs> <laughs> How is Oliver going to fix the police? Um, so, But he, he fun, like in this episode, now you know that Lance does not have uh, a battling kind of consciousness. He is on Team Arrow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's going to... You know, we, we've talked about him being in the grave for a while. Yeah. I mean, it's trending towards that. It really is. I agree. I think there were some moments. I like Lance. I think, you know, he's a, he's a good, tough cop, you know? <laughs> but there are moments when he just, like, in season three, he just seemed like an idiot. Yeah. You know, and I, just, yeah. I couldn't support this guy. So I feel like I like that they're finally coming back around to this guy. That, I mean, he's he's been around. He knows what's going on. He's, well, let, well, let's give the guy some points because I will say that in season three, he suffered simply for the fact that two of the lead characters of the show decided to not tell him that his <laughs> daughter died. Yeah. That was just... <laughs> Uh, anyways, back to season four. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, no, and that's, that was one of the biggest issues I had last season. So the fact that now he's like, all right, we, he's coming back full circle. He's with the team now, yeah. you know, which he kind of sort of was back in season one. But now he's like officially a member of the team. And so I like it. I'm rooting for this guy. I don't want him to be in the grave. I think oh, there's man. a very good chance mm -hmm. he could be, but I'm liking him more and more. Nice. Yeah. I nice. want to see him cross over more because I, one of my favorite things was a crossover episode last season where um, on, in Flash, where Joe, Flash. Yeah, yeah. and when Joe was giving him advice about Laurel, about because I mean Joe is always the moral center. He's yeah, always yeah, giving yeah, advice, yeah. and I love the moment when they're together. Because I feel like yeah, he's just outside. They have to get, find excuses to maybe I haven't even come to a crime scene. He's like mm -hmm. Laurel's like, why are you here? It's like why is the, the captain of the police department coming here? He's like, well, <laughs> that's how scraps we are for people, our resources. We need a budget. Right. He so needs baggies. I yeah. feel like they're 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 running out of ways to. I don't know. They're trying to find excuses to use him. I think they're running out of time. So hopefully he's not. In the what, grave, which is re the reason why originally, like at the beginning of the season. Right. When he revealed to be like in partner with Dark, where I was, that was originally like, 
my thought for why he was in the grave was because mm-hmm. I was like, I don't know if they have anything else for Lance to do, and that's the reason why they're going to kill him off. Yeah. Now, now I, I'm not so sure on that theory, and I know you and I doubled down on that, but now yeah. you and I have both kind of switched the thea, and we got plenty of time for grave yeah. talk. That's that's yeah. well, that's all our predictions have become. <laughs> um, I want to talk about, we talked about Lance and Oliver. Let's talk about another, I think, great character connection that we really haven't seen since season two, and that was the scene between Thea and Oliver, where Oliver mm. told her the truth. Josh, what did you think? Well, I mean, she kind of did her best gumshoeing, you know, mm-hmm. and um, and found out that, that he had a son. And I, I, re- that, I think that was my favorite scene of the episode, really, because it was a really nice moment for a brother and sister who really haven't had many that he's been like agreeing with Thea, where Thea's like, you should do this, like, shut up, Thea, I'll do what I want, I'm the green arrow. This one, he's like, you're right. Uh, you know, like, uh, you have to like kind of go about this delicately, but if Felicity is a, is a normal human, be- human being, she'll understand the situation. That's kind of what- You would hope? Yeah, you would hope. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what Thea laid out, you know? Can I just say how refreshing it is to watch an episode of Arrow and not have them mention that freaking bloodlust? Yeah, it's so nice oh, to not yeah. hear them talk about Isn't it that. Nice? Yeah, yeah, and that's that's been my issue with someone like Thea. Like in the first couple seasons, I didn't care much for. I thought season three did a, a pretty decent job in like starting to develop her character, and I feel like she's kind of taken a few steps back this season. So to have mm. a strong season, uh, a scene like that with Oliver in this one, I think really helped her character out more. I'm back on back on Team Thea. I like Thea. I still don't think she's in the grave. I don't want her to be in the grave. <laughs> But yeah, that was a scene that needed to happen, and I'm glad it did. Not to be too cheeseball, but I think all most of the CW shows are about family. Yeah, Supernatural, The Vampire Diaries, Never The would. Originals. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all family. It's all yeah. about family. So I think so a lot of these characters are more interesting when their families are around. I think Thea's at her best when Malcolm's around. Yeah. And when Malcolm's not around, oh, I think wow. she kind of wavers really? a little bit. Yeah, when Malcolm's okay. there, because it creates this tension. Cause you have this crazy dad who mm. loves her, but he's crazy, and he might, I don't know, he might throw her under the bus at any moment, but still... It's an interesting relationship. Do you, guys, like do, you, do you guys like that we saw Malcolm Merlin so quickly after the big thing of last? Because again, he didn't even really get to say any lines. He was just yeah. sitting at the yeah. table with his arm like, Ooh, my yeah. God. yeah, yeah. Like, shouldn't shouldn't? Do you guys think that we should have? Like, I kind of feel that we should have. We should have understand why he just jumped it. on Dark yeah, Crew. Yeah, he'd really, I don't get it either. I yeah. mean, I get that he's. They're, they're kind of in cahoots now. They're working together because he did reveal who William was. Mm-hmm. But for him to just like so quickly join the bandwagon, you think, I mean, the guy just got his freaking hand chopped off. You know, yeah. you, well, I, and he lost his entire power base. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, take a couple take a couple days off. Bro. I, I think the issue is they water, <laughs> they water down who Rachel Gould is. Yes. Yeah. First of all, Oliver should never have killed him. That was well, how many seasons ago? Whatever. Last, last season. Last season. Should last never killed him last season. And then whoever took over the mantle should be close to as badass as he is. And now, now it's just dis- the League of Assassins just disbanded. I mean, again, the shows. I mean, even uh, 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 Stephen Wells come out and said this is basically a Batman show. He yeah. says he said that. So it's like I think they watered down who Rachel Ghoul is, and that makes Malcolm look weak, and he shouldn't be weak. Which is a funny story. They actually revealed that we're going to see Ra's al Ghul on Legends of Tomorrow. Uh, yeah. Oh in wow! One of the other time period. That which, same actor? I, I don't know about that. I don't know oh, about that. Wow. So. Now, in all honesty, though, the reason that they got rid of Russell Gould, Rachel Gould, uh, however we're yeah, I know it, said, yeah. uh, is that the Arrow team was just running out of frequent flyer miles to get back and forth and end part. That's true. That's not cheap. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. And I was it's, small, it's a small airport. It's, small, it's a small like airport. Christ, <laughs> small airport. Security alone. Yeah. Um, <clears> I think that. Uh, I, yeah, like. I didn't, he didn't need to be there. It was again. No. It's almost Austin Powersy, where he's like, <laughs> "This guy cut off my hand. Now I'm part of the evil crew." Where before <laughs> Merlin was like legit fighting Damian Dark, saying, "You don't know what this guy's capable of. We need yep. to take him down." Mm-hmm. He was so forthright about yeah, it. But yeah, but Damian Dark's like, "Oh, you told me a name, so there have an I pull up yeah. an IKEA chair." <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Welcome to our well lit cave as well. Yeah. Right, a well lit cave. Let's talk about a couple of the big things that happened at the very end of the episode. Now, the one of the the first thing we saw was we saw their engagement party with all the insane decorations and the catering. And Curtis Holt walked in with his, with his boyfriend, uh, was, or his husband? Husband. 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 Yeah. And he gave Felicity a gift, which is basically a microchip that can make her walk. Yeah. And it's powered with the Palmer Tech battery. And we already seem to have the solution for how Felicity's going to walk again. Oh. Did they introduce this too soon? Should they have waited? Or should they have just not even gave a solution. Like we kind of all figured that there was going to be a solution because we live in a universe where the atom exists in that power suit. Right. Uh, what, what do you think, Josh? Yeah, I don't, I don't dislike it because we're still what eight episodes from the finale. I believe so. Yes. And he did mention that it's not going to happen right away. Mm-hmm. It's going to be like a process. So I'm guessing we'll probably get like it, it two seems to like it's going to like charge up her spine. Right. They're, they're right. going to milk it. Yeah. They're yeah. going to milk it. But I think this was, I mean, engagement party, really sentimental moment. I think this is the right time to introduce it. Mm. Maybe a little bit early in the 
this season. Mm -hmm. I thought it was the right scene to introduce it, but maybe like next episode or the episode after. I thought this engagement party was really rushed kind of thing. Like we, you know, they haven't even set a date. We don't even really get yeah. that stuff. Not that I'm like, like the watching the four not, weddings not on sci-fi. <laughs> you know? Yeah, so. yeah, exactly. Uh, so I don't, yeah, I'm really on the fence about it. I don't think I can give you either way. Yeah. I think it's too early. I would have liked to have seen it a little bit longer. I mean, she's Overwatch, kind of like Oracle. You know, I would have liked mm -hmm. to have seen it just have gone a little bit longer. Maybe even like tied in with Earth Two. Maybe they find the technology in another Earth. Mm -hmm. You know, like one of the yeah. Flash Arrow crossovers. I think that would have been cool. So yeah, me, because we all thought we all thought here that the episode after she got uh, out of the hospital that like she immediately jumped back in the team, and we all thought here that was too soon. Like as I want to well. see her right. live with it a yes. little bit longer. Yeah. But, yeah, and that's the thing. That's why it doesn't surprise me. It took her like basically in our time, a week for her to pretty much get used to everything, this yeah. traumatic experience. So why the hell not already yeah. give her I a guess. chip? I guess, let's just rush to the end, let's rush <laughs> yeah. to the end. Uh, and then also at the very end, the very final scene, we got to see Damien Dark kidnapped William, whatever his last Queen. name is. Uh, let's just call him no, William Queen. Let's, let's just call him yeah. William Queen. We don't know Billy if he Queen. was kidnapped. We still don't we know that. Oh, okay, okay. Assuming okay. Well, okay, Damien Dark is in his in house, and we see Damien Dark's daughter, and Damien's Dark daughter is like, "Oh, hi, William Queen." And he's like, "Oh, <laughs> yeah, go play." He didn't Yay. seem scared. Yeah. And he wasn't yeah. maybe. But also, too, yeah. is um, do you think Damien Dark pulled up in his giant limo and was like, "Hello, William, I'm the baby." So <laughs> I have some, I have some candy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, candy, don't mind the albino ness. <laughs> I think, I think uh, in the in the trailer for next week, it says like they kidnapped his son. Yeah. So oh. we we pretty much like. With Hence that, the reason why hence, we were doing the ransom joke. You right. kidnapped my daughter. Oh, <laughs> Give me back my son. Give me back my daughter. <laughs> um, I I really like that. Yep. I do. I'm a I'm a big fan of how quick that's progressing. A child kidnapping. Yeah. yeah well, <laughs> well, here's the thing: is last week we said we don't think they could go dark enough to kill a kid, and then in every comment on YouTube or Twitter, they were like, "Well, the they opening killed Legends tomorrow. Rip Hunter's yeah. son, yeah. 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 and they've killed kids in the show before." So obviously that could happen. Um, I just I just don't think I don't know. I, it's for grave talk, we don't have to do that. But I do like how this is progressing with. I the like that we have a section now called grave, grave talk. <laughs> is, that, is that a real <laughs> thing? You guys have a grave, grave talk, talk segment. Yeah, we That's have awesome. basically the predictions uh, section of this the show is now talk grave talk. Nice. Welcome back to grave talk. Grave I'm talk. your host, <laughs> Michael. What do you think about it? Um, no, I, I like it because mm -hmm. I think we've talked about this with uh, a show like like Arrow and with Damian Dark. I feel like he's kind of gone away for a while. Like he was kind of the big bad mm -hmm. for the, the start of the season, went away for a little bit to where you almost forgot about him. So it's yeah. nice. I mean, this is a bad dude. I mean, I want to see him do bad things, and that's exactly he's what a bad this is. Man. He's a bad man, <laughs> and so that's why I'm just wondering, like, if. <laughs> That's what I'm wondering. That's what I'm. Give me back my son. Give me back my son. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, did he? We don't. Uh, yeah, we have to assume the kid. He, the kid is kidnapped. But like, how did he go about the kidnapping? I guess is what I'm saying. You know, did he just like straight up just go and take him from I from a, what's her I name? I have a feeling or? that sadly, like the the mayoral debate. Uh, we will yeah, never. We, we will <laughs> never see it. I can't. Like, like, I'm, see it. Yeah. Like, uh, if you guys are fine uh, putting the uh, uh, all the William Queen debate to bed let's move on to the thing the, the the bad of this episode the stuff that we didn't like i think there was and, two things i didn't like oh go ahead <laughs> two one obviously the flashbacks uh didn't even really show him killing conklin they just figured he's dead well i wanted to point out and we all saw this the stunt man that played Conklin oh, looked nothing like Conklin. <laughs> yeah. I said he looked like that old school GI Joe with the fake hair. I thought big, he looked like the brawny man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Clear size differential. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, yeah. Th 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 this flashback, we all as soon as it went, we're like, why are they digging in the wall? Yeah. Did we get? Did we cover that last flashback? Mm -hmm. Seems like they're really grazing over a lot of stuff, and they're like, they're gonna remember we talked about the wall. So they're, you know, I think we're, I think they're kind of taking advantage of our, yeah. our flashback knowledge. <laughs> and then the fight was is pretty lame. It, Oliver, pretty smart guy, doesn't notice the giant mirror behind Conklin. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, just not the best. I really think that these flashbacks are are turning into. Like you know how good Family Guy is at doing the like the cutaways. Mm, this yeah. is like just cutaways to have cutaways. <laughs> I, I'm just I'm worried. I'm worried about the flashbacks because you know we at least have one more year because they're um, going to carry the flashbacks for at least the five year God, yeah, the time. After that, I don't know what they're going to do because I'm I'm sure that Arrow is going to get to season six. Like yeah. I have no doubt about that. Um, but yeah, what? What are they going to do? Because they've never been able to give us anything in the flashbacks that's been able to match Deathstroke. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. You know, it, like, and I don't, I don't know where they're going to go. Because again, like, yeah, I, I kind of just tune out every yeah. time the flashback yeah. comes on. Yeah, and that was my biggest issue too. I think with the flashbacks with Conklin, that was his arch nemesis, really, in the mm -hmm. flashbacks mm -hmm. for this season. So it was a little anticlimactic. Ugh. You know what I mean? Like just the way he went down, like Oy! you know, it's just like it was so like. Yeah. It was now introduce like, my <laughs> brother. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was really disappointing. And the fact that yeah, I would have liked to have seen the mayoral debate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would have been nice. Cause say a random thing. Yeah, it's go completely. For it. 
it's not really off topic. Nothing's random. Go so for it. So I've been watching X Files, and it's really cool. We saw uh, that that that's we, next door. Oh, yeah. sorry. Well, <laughs> yeah, no, sorry. I'm gonna go on the X Files. <laughs> <Get out>. So <laughs> uh, Robbie <laughs> Mel was on this past uh, week's episode of the X Files. It was cool. Mm-hmm. Firestorm herself slash Death Storm, and also the uh, Yodlin guy, the, uh, s- the the Southern act guy who's playing. You got to uh, play Conklin. You mean Conklin? Conklin? Conklin yeah. Oh, yeah. he's on there too. He's on there too. Who oh, I don't think is Southern okay. at all because he has no accent. But yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Random. Was that it? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I think I, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think I completely messed David up. Griffin, that right? Right? Let's say I'm here. Thanks, I'm, all right. Thanks. Thanks for having me, folks. Coming having nowhere. Me. The X Files <laughs> recap show. <laughs> um, I want to point out a couple of things. There, this episode, even though I, I liked it a lot, had a little, just like little tiny <laughs> stuff that I kind of went like, hmm. Like the uh, the member of the the demolition team with the nail gun. <laughs> That, you, you guys were breaking me, down the. the me, I don't, I don't know much me, money. I don't want to sound like an a hole here, but usually I do. So whatever. <laughs> um, I work construction for like five summers. Okay, nail guns are extremely inaccurate, especially if you're shooting them long distance. The reason why you have a nail gun is to just go boom and it goes straight down in the thing. To shoot a nail straight at somebody in like a one of those layers is near to impossible. Okay. Second of all, shooting a nail gun into a laptop on top of the laptop, probably not going to go through. Like, they, he did, she didn't yep. shoot it from point It'd blank. It would just bounce off. It, just, yeah. it would just bounce off, especially the angle mm-hmm. of it, right? Second of all, if, if I were to shoot you from, like, here to, uh, like, into this camera here with a nail gun, it would stick in your thing about this much. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't be mo- mortally wounded. I'm just saying. I've shot myself point blank with a nail gun twice. It's not good, guys. It's, <laughs> Easy. Let me try this. <laughs> it's not good. I shot myself in the foot, and I shot myself in the hand. It wasn't awesome, uh, and you can't, you, it's really hard to die from a nail Gun, well, saying. I think uh, Josh nailed that coffin yeah. Let's move on. We <laughs> know uh, in the comments we're going to yeah. find all these articles about death by nail. Bring it on, guys. Bring another, it on. I've been there. Another thing that made me go, hmm, in this episode was the black bags that they hid behind the oh, bar with their yes. costumes. David and Michael, what do we think about that they're just leaving their costumes in gym bags for anybody to well, find? My issue, first of all, if it wasn't bad enough that they just left their duffel bags behind the bar earlier yeah. in the episode, then later, halfway through, they just got lazy. They just started, they just dumped them yeah. off to the side. Yeah, do you remember in season one, where back? there was a, there was a <laughs> giant plot point when Oliver ran out of that one uh, function, and he had his costume in the tr- the trash can, and that's how uh, that's how Lance spotted him on the on the yeah. surveillance mm-hmm. camera. Yeah, yeah. Like, and now he's just like, ah, screw a black bag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing look to see here. The, best well, like the bartender, suspicious. the bartender shows up for work. He's like. Hey, er- Eric, is this your black bag? <laughs> we gotta move so, this, man. It's in Who has well. the red tights? Yeah. Who is it? Maybe he's going to the gym later. Yeah. You know, he's got his workout gear in there. Is this a leather coat with studs on it? What are we wearing this for? Yeah. Uh, Why it, so many buckles? <laughs> yeah. And before we move on to our Twitter questions, I want to point out the last Easter egg that I thought was really cool when they mentioned that, and I, I they might have mentioned this in the first episode of the season, uh, where Oliver and Felicity lived was in Ivy Town. Which is classically the university that Ray Palmer, the Adam, he taught at, which I thought was kind of cool. It's also the place that they, when they they go to like St. Roque University, but Ivy Town is like where Martin Stein was supposedly, Mm -hmm. it's a joke in Legends Tomorrow right now. So I didn't realize that that was, if they said that in the first episode of the season, if they did, I I missed it. So there you go. So let's move on into our Twitter questions that you guys can send us anytime, any day, any arrow time at <laughs> hashtag uh, Collider Arrow. And Josh, lovely Josh, has them on his phone for oh, us. Thanks, guys. Uh, first question comes from Leonis Delorbe uh, at Leonis D. Could Felicity in the flash forward, meaning in the limo, be a figment of Oliver's imagination? We have seen some. Well, we uh, saw Goth Felicity. Yeah, yeah, we saw Goth Felicity, and we mm-hmm. saw Oliver kind of freak out with um, what's his the the woman that saved his life? Shadow. Yeah, Shadow. Mm-hmm. Uh, in in the in the cave there when he was getting beaten. So, I don't know. That's an excellent point because I know a lot of the the viewers, a lot of you guys, uh, put in the comment section that you know she's not wearing her engagement ring. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's very possible. And I think now more so than ever because of the fact that we've seen Shadow. You know, that we saw that whole scene and how that really messed with the set. That that's a strong possibility. But then that means Felicity's in the grave, and that really sucks. Mm, David, what do you think? Man? But is it? You wonder if she's changing his perception. Is he going to go dark again? He's kind of been on the light path, mm-hmm. and she seems like she's ready to get. If that is his figment of his imagination. She's trying to get go for revenge, yeah. and Oliver, if he's going towards light, shouldn't be thinking about revenge. So I mean, you wonder if I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see if that happens. Maybe he'll go back to his old ways oh, to, the, think, to, to the monster. I don't think they'd him. actually go that route though. They spent. Well, they, I don't know. They, yeah. they spent so much time in you know introducing this new I, that's lighter what I think. I, I think arrow. It's, I, well, seems. I, I, I think Felicity being a fake out or being a, a figment of imagination is just no. Yeah. I, I think. 
I think that's too far. I think that's that's even a step too far from what we've been talking about, the possibility that mm. whoever's in that grave could be a fake out and that only Oliver knows that they're alive, which mm. I think is a more interesting possibility. But the fact that they showed us somebody on camera and we're going to say that that person doesn't exist, I think is a step too far. I, I think Felicity is alive. It's not Felicity. Yeah, yeah. I also think uh, there was an episode of X Files where they go they go into this. Um, yeah, that's the, next. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, my bad, my bad. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this next question comes from at Ankin or at Ank Zone. Um, What's up with Diggle's Magneto ability tonight fighting the demolition crew? Meaning that scene when they, he goes to throw the sledgehammer and he magnetos it away from him. Like he yeah, he, like he, 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 he pushes his arm and the sledgehammer gets thrown away. And from you hear the like guy. The yeah. and he's like, I yeah. got toys too. Right. And then nothing. Yeah, nothing. That has deleted never, scene. That maybe, maybe. that that's oh, never man. been introduced. Yeah, correct? Never. No, I've never seen anything like. Not that. even well, on Flash. I, I, no. I have to assume because correct me if I'm wrong. Did he not get hit in the chest earlier? I episode. thought he did. I thought he got hit in the chest. So this would make sense that, all right, well, with the Arrow Cave, they put some tech together to prevent that from happening. That's well and good. But, all right, could you have maybe shown us them mm. working on this mm. or at least thinking of, hey, I need somebody to develop something for me? You know, just anything, just to be like, okay, Felicity, that I, Somebody's got a sledgehammer. I got to stop it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, it's a cool It's a cool toy. Don't get me I, wrong. I think I, was... I think you're right, David. I think you might have nailed it on the yeah. head. I, I bet it's a deleted scene of some type. He does look like Magneto. Well, it's true. Yeah. I mean, they, they could have designed that helmet and not thought Magneto. We'll get past that next week on the Flash. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, what have we got next, man? Uh, finally, we have uh, from the Lonely Seahorse at MK Songbird. What a great uh, Twitter kind of. Yeah. <laughs> Any thoughts on what Damien Dark's plan for Star City is? Learn this episode. Control of City Hall is needed for Phase Five. Control all the core. Okay, yeah. So they revealed that they they need somebody in charge of Star City that's going to do what they want. They no longer want to destroy that. I thought it was a really great scene when Oliver came up with that. I want to start with you, Josh. What do you think? What? Let's just throw uh, into the dark. <laughs> uh, well, You're just on fire. I know, tonight. I know, right? Mr. Well, this Puns. is a very punny episode, and I got to live up to mm -hmm. it. Um, let's well let, done. I'm let's throw our it. arrows good. into the dark, and let's just throw our predictions for anything Crazy Town. What what is what are they doing? What is Damian Dark Inspector doing? I think that um, what they're doing, and what like they kind of almost uh, gave us a little Easter egg with the demolition crew, is that they're planning on leveling that city. Okay, I think they're going to level it and then move. They're the people that they want underground. They're gonna become facility. mole people. Mole people. <laughs> <laughs> until they, until they, <laughs> until they have um, season five. Uh, Arrow versus the mole, mole people. <laughs> uh, Damien Dark has pale skin. I'm just saying. Um, True. He's gonna level the city, and then he he was gonna his whole plan to resurrect the city underground and then build it back up. David, do you have a plan that yeah, makes what's any a, more sense? Why is Star City the, uh, the epicenter for it? It doesn't seem like it's that great of a city. No. I mean, Malcolm already tried to demolish you know, part of the city. You yeah, know, why, the, why the hell is anybody living in Star City? Why is living there? Now? Yeah, like, I can't imagine the real estate value is great. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, yeah. so I think that I'm going to go, I'm going to talk about Malcolm for a little bit. Yeah. But it has to do with Damien. I think Damien Dark's going to try to achieve ultimate power in Star City. And I think Malcolm's going to take that power and become the head of Hive. Because he's missing being Ra Ra's al Ghul. That's, that was his calling card. I think he's going to take it over. Yeah. Michael. I'd like to see. Okay, first of all, I don't think they're going to destroy the city. I think we've already gone down that path. I mean, they could. Three years in a row. Yep. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and the Batman yep. begins. Yep. <laughs> it's like if you live in Star City, you better have a timeshare somewhere else because yeah. come May, your building's going to get blown up. <laughs> yeah. No, I could. I'd like to see Damian Dark do something maybe like kind of like a dark side, like some anti-life equation, something just so crazy. He wants to take over everybody's minds. And just everybody just is basically his own puppet for his own enjoyment for whatever reason. I mean, we still have to explain that corn that corn's going to come I, into play I'm gonna, at some point i'm gonna springboard off of you because that's what i was gonna say i don't think he wants to kill anybody i don't think he wants to just there's a dc comics villain called dark side he is basically the thanos of the dc universe even though he predates thanos so thanos is a copy of him haha <laughs> take it uh, <laughs> huh. so he basically is looking for the anti-life equation basically that like destruction and everything that's his power i think that they have something to do with dark side and that that corn is infused with the anti-life equation. He's boom. gonna feed it to the people of Star City, and ba-boom, he has an army that follows his every whim a lot better than the pill people that he's had the ghost this season. Yep. So my mole people's out. Yep, so mole people, no <laughs> Pretty mole Pretty much, Because mole people saying. don't like corn. Mm, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's true. All right, they that's, don't like light either. It's a shame, like, should, yeah. we, should we go around real quick and say grave? Grave talk. Real well, quick? let's. Yeah, yeah, let, thank you guys for all your Twitter questions, yeah. real quick. Uh, hashtag Collider Arrow. Like, we're gonna now hop into our predictions. We saw the trailer for next week. Mm -hmm. It looks like "Give Me Back My Son" is gonna happen because <laughs> Damien Dark has the son. Uh, 
uh, yeah, I want to see, want to hear what you guys' predictions for next week are, and then let's do the update of who we think is in the grave. Let's start with Michael. Um, okay, I'm gonna say, okay, we see in the trailer that he tells Felicity about his son, about mm-hmm. William. I'm gonna say that Felicity is gonna take it better than she did in the previous time. Okay. I think that she's going to, it's gonna be rough, but I think she's gonna deal with it. You know, it's mm-hmm. gonna be fine. Um, yeah, I'm gonna say that she's gonna deal with that. And uh, I w- you know what I wanna see? I wanna see some Andy. They mentioned Andy's name briefly in this, and we haven't really seen like yeah, what Yeah, Diggle in a lot of scenes, like he was just like, oh, I gotta go check in with Andy again. Yeah. It's like, call him on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> and like, he's over at the house now with the yeah, baby. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's over at the house. So I see Diggle would walk in, I'm sorry. Diggle would walk in and be like, yeah, Andy told me this thing. Well, we got this other thing. I'll go back and talk to Andy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, Andy. I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, I don't, but I'm, I'm like, the, you might be the first time and first time we've ever said this on the show. Like, I wanna see more Andy. I don't wanna see more Andy. I don't give a crap on that news. <laughs> you wanna see him like playing cards and, you know, hey, yeah. I, I want to see Andy over mole people. I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> just wait till the costume design for mole people. It's uh, yeah. Who do you think is in the grave? Who do you think is in the grave? I'm going to go. Are you sticking with your guns? Uh-oh. I'm going. Uh, man. Oh, this episode like of Maze changed mine. It's all okay. over the place. I, I yeah. don't know. Um, I'm going to go Mama Smoke just because all right. developing her Switching. a little bit more, kind of like what I said. You know what I mean? And that's that scares me. You're going me like horror bit. franchise. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Algorithm kind of thing, like yeah. hot girl, big boobs gets killed first. Yep, pretty much. Hmm. Yeah. David, what do you think we're going to see next week? Well, I mean, it's cheating to say Vixen because I know yeah. we're, we're going to see Vixen coming yeah. from Detroit. Uh, I'm excited to see. Detroit, I'm, I'm excited to see. I think she's going to play a bigger role than we think. I don't think she's going to be a one off. I don't oh, think she'll nice. be like a regular member of the team, but I think they're going to call on her more than we think. I, don't I think, think this just, is her setup for life. Yeah. I don't think that, yeah. that's a good point. I don't think yeah. they're just going to bring her in, just throw her away. So I think mm-hmm. she's going to be a bigger point. Great prediction. I'm sticking with Laurel. I think Laurel's going to be in the grave. Wow. Especially after the last week. A Laurel Island. Okay. I know. Let me tell you about Laurel. Especially because of the uh, how they disbanded the League of Assassins. Nisa has nothing to do. She's just sitting around. What does she got to do? Maybe she's going to go back to that palace or whatever they have over there in the you desert. You think Nisa's just going to get bored and kill Laurel? <laughs> no. Well, no, no. Laurel's going to die. But she's going to come back and join the team. Oh, okay. And be a full-time member of the team. Here, here's oh, okay. something I just thought of right now. And this is just completely just whatever. Out of left field. Um, is this about the X-Files? And... Well, I was thinking. So, that show's so, uh, right next door. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually pretty good this season. You should check out the X-Files. Now, I don't know if it's been confirmed that this character is returning next season. But no one seems to bring up um, Holt. Curtis Holt. Mr. Terrific. Now, yes, maybe it's too soon. He just <clears throat> introduced him this mm. season. So for him to be in the grave. But we see that, you know, he's really cementing his himself, you know, to at least to an extent. He's not part of the that team That would be yet. tragic if they killed him because and he healed, you know, uh, Felicity. Felicity can't walk. Yeah. You know, you see how much he's meant to the team. Kind of like how Felicity was in the early days when she didn't quite know about what was going on. But she was still helping them behind mm-hmm. the scenes. Okay. It would suck because then, I mean, there's no T-spheres for me. Yeah. But, you know, I think that would that also, make... That also has to mandate that there has to be a scene between Barry Barry and Curtis somewhere in the future. That's very true. Because otherwise, why would Barry be there? That's yeah. true. Mm. Josh, Prediction. what do you think about next I'm, week? I, listen, Who's in that grave? We got a lot of <laughs> teasers this week. Like I was saying, yeah. you know, I'm... Uh, I love the Mama Smoke move, but I'm sticking with Thea. Yep. I'm staying Thea. I think that's who's going to be in that grave. She's burning it at both ends. What do you think we're going to see in our Arrows version of Ransom? <laughs> <laughs> Give me back my shot! <laughs> Sorry. I hope so. <laughs> uh, no, I think uh, I, th- that whole episode next week is going to deal with his son. Mm-hmm. I think we're, we're going to see so much of William. Uh, you know, we could even get the code name by the end. Uh, Felicity and he are going to have a falling out, mm. but it's going to be all about What do you mean son. by the code name? Uh, Connor Hawk. Oh, okay, okay. Hey, I think do they you might think, start interesting. Kind of like what you say, how mm. it could just be like, maybe it's just, all, it's just whatever, just maybe they pretend to kill William and then mm-hmm. just change his name to Connor Hawk so that he can go and live a quote unquote normal life. Mm-hmm. That could be a possibility. There is, a, that's very true. There's nothing to say that Connor Hawk is not William that we're seeing in, uh, um, you know, in and that the mom, code name. And the mom could be killed too. So that leaves Oliver and Felicity to have to that's take true. care of the kids. That's true. I, I'm staying with you. I, I think it's Thea. I think Thea is in that grave. And I think that's the reason why we had that scene tonight of her going back for the bomb and barely making know, it out. I know. Uh, because they really focused on that for some reason, which yeah. I think is interesting. I think also um, they kind of set that up a little bit by because her and Oliver kind of came to like an understanding in this episode. And again, like hinted back to the season one, season two, Oliver and Thea. I think next week, I I think next week, Dark figures out Oliver Queen's the era. I think it's next week. Wow. I think that's the reveal, and I think all bets are off Why do I feel like once that's that happens. In, like three episodes, but... 
And they're rushing a lot this season. They're, so I mean, we didn't think, I mean, Felicity's been in the chair two episodes and we already have the cure for her. So yeah, yeah, I don't true, think true. there's anything that. So yeah. I think that's going to do it for tonight's episode of the Collider Arrow Recap Show. Guys, don't forget to subscribe for all your Collider goodness and Arrow goodness and the Flash Recap Show goodness as well. And don't forget to give us plenty of questions on the Twitter with the hashtag Collider Arrow. Josh McCuga, where can people find you and call you crazy for talking about mole people? <laughs> Guys, you can find me underground as the king of the mole people. Um, at Josh McCuga on Twitter and Instagram. I'll be down there uh, hacking in through my mole computer. And uh, my show Between the Sheets uh, TV on YouTube. David, uh, where can they look for that future X-Files recap show? Yeah, so I'm going to be doing a solo X-Files recap show right here on Collider. I'm announcing it today. I don't care what Dennis says back there. We're making it happen. No, it's not happening. Uh, you can find me uh, at Griffin D on Twitter. And uh, I think the Star Wars Rebels recap should be up pretty soon. So, well, I guess whenever this goes up. Uh, so look for that, too. You'll be shooting that in the parking lot, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, where can they find you if they want to complain about you wanted to just kill Mama Smoke? <laughs> I love Mama Smoke, but hey, if you want to help me find my son, you can follow me on Twitter. <laughs> <at> Mr. Mike. <laughs> 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 give him <laughs> give him detailed maps in 140 characters or less. Okay. <laughs> He's like him, but smaller, a little bit younger. <laughs> well, you can do that at Mr. Michael Alexis or on Instagram at Mr. Michael Alexis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> you can find me on Twitter at Jawin and on Instagram and YouTube with the same spelling, J-A-W-I-I-N. Uh, I don't have a son, so I don't need to find him. So don't no need to tweet me about that. Uh, guys, as I said, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you guys for watching every week. And don't forget, we'll see you next week for another Collider Arrow recap show. And hood up.